Okay, so time to examine this guy's claims that he makes in this video. This guy who both simultaneously claims that he is actively playing the game because he wants to use exploits for himself, but then also says that he won't be coming back to the game uh, because he doesn't believe the hype. Uh, is he playing or is he not? I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's see. Claim number one, swarms of bots. Uh, my response to this is that uh, there was not a swarm of bots. I can count the number of suspicious players I encountered on two hands in 1400 hours of playing the game. The best areas to farm or a calcum and the best uh, uh, gatherable ingredients in the game were elite areas where bots could not survive as it was as it required very specific climbing and routes um, that would uh, still result sometimes in having to solo some of these elite uh, monsters or having to run away from some very tough content. Um, sometimes you'd have to wait for mobs to turn around or path away uh, in order to loot certain things. Stuff like this. Uh, behavior that would require active play and, uh, and active problem solving. Uh, even live players died all the time uh, trying to solo in these areas or they teamed up with others to try to gather the resources. Um, number two, claim number two, dupe mules. So a dupe mule is the idea that like these people duped all these items and they just stockpiled them up on uh, alternate characters, waiting t uh, to dump them onto a new server uh, at some later date, thus ruining the, the server. Okay, this is not an issue with fresh start servers, as only new created, uh, newly created characters will be able to play on them. Uh, so previously made mule accounts, if they exist, cannot play on these new servers. Claim number three. Amazon is paying YouTubers to shill the game and to hype it up. Uh, for this claim, he has uh, presented zero evidence, so I don't believe him. Uh, claim number four. Amazon does not answer your support tickets. Okay. <laughs> so he claims he put thousands of support tickets in and got one human response. First of all, no player would ever place thousands of support tickets. This is an obvious exaggeration. Uh, just imagine placing even a hundred tickets and never getting a response. Why would you place the 101st ticket after that? Much less to go on, uh, go on to place thousands more. No player has ever done that. This guy is a liar and most of the dev interaction with the player base actually happened on the official bug and exploit forum on the official website, uh, where posts could gain traction, people could respond, more and more players could bring a particular issue to light. Um, tickets within the game were just for reporting, not for discussion. Um, claim number five. I've never ordered a single thing on Amazon in my entire life. Okay, so this one doesn't have anything to do with the game, but are you serious? <laughs> this guy has never bought anything on Amazon in his life. You know, Jeff Bezos is a very rich man for a reason. Uh, I would definitely say this puts this guy into a, an extreme minority, or more likely he is lying, once again, for no reason at all this time. Uh, claim number six. He played on the same server as Damone Kim. Okay, Damone Kim is, uh, if you don't know him, is he's, he's a YouTube content creator. He had a lot of great uh, New World videos and still does. Um, it's I, honestly worth worth watching. He's a very positive energy type of guy. He doesn't cry and complain. Um, anyway, but Damone notoriously played on one of the deadest servers in the game. Uh, this was a terrible experience that would make anybody hate the game. Uh, definitely. Damone himself talked about this many times, uh, but I guess he's a shill too, right? This guy thinks that all these people that, that don't just shit on the game uh, every time and every chance they get uh, are all shills. Um, the moral of the story here, though, however, is if you're going to play New World, don't play on a dead server. Make your character on a server that isn't dead. It's that easy. Anyway, uh, claim number seven. Uh, don't say anything in global chat or all the players that don't like you will group report you and auto ban you. Okay. 
this never happened to me. It never happened to Jackson. It never happened to Zachariah. It never happened to any of my brothers who played this game. It never happened to any of the players that we used to play with all the time on Discord. Um, I heard about some incidents of mass report. Uh, there were some massive incidents of like uh, company versus company, which is like guild versus guild, um, where one company would mass report the other company right before a battle to try to get their their army, you know, somewhat banned so that they would improve their chances of winning. Uh, these incidents were uh, were normally uncovered obviously because I know about them, um, and proper punishment was doled out. Um, the uh, innocent accounts were either restored or they were not affected. They never got banned in the first place. Uh, most players who complained, most players in the game that we encountered that complained constantly about being banned were actually later found out to have actually been doing something they should not have been doing, and uh, they were actually cheating at the game the vast majority of them. So the biggest whiners were actually the people who were perpetrating the, the issue. <laughs> um, my eyes get shifty when a guy like this says he was banned multiple times. Um, nobody got banned multiple times, unless they were doing something they shouldn't have been. Uh, point number eight, uh, this is where the section where he starts talking about current exploits. Uh, the first one he mentions is a speed exploit. Uh, there was a speed exploit that existed at one time, I remember. Um, you, In order to get it, you would go into the PvP battlegrounds. Um, it was called... Uh, what the hell was it called? Whatever it was called. I can't remember. Anyway, you go into the PvP battlegrounds. Uh, everybody knew about it. Uh, it would seem to trigger randomly. And it was completely unavoidable. It happened to me several times, uh, not even trying to do it. It would just occur. It was kind of a joke at the time. It made the battleground completely unplayable, um, and everybody complained about it. The, the One of the problems, though, is that this glitch would persist until you died, so people would get this glitch on purpose, um, not sometimes even knowing how to get it, just that it would happen, and then they would leave the battleground, and then they'd have this like super speed that they'd use to travel across the over like the outside the normal world to like gather resources super fast. There were some videos posted about this at the time. Um, I think this went on for like a couple weeks through or something like that, and then um, finally it was fixed, and you can no longer do this anymore. Um, that said, in the vast majority of my time playing. Uh, I don't know of any other speed exploits, and I don't remember seeing players zooming around the map uh, all the time, except for during this one particular time frame where this glitch happened. Um, he also, <laughs> later after this, after talking about this, he, he goes on to openly admit that he knows how to do some kind of new speed glitch, and that he's not going to tell anybody because he doesn't want it to get fixed, because he wants to continue to exploit it for himself. So, yeah, I'm starting to understand why this guy claims he got banned so many times. Uh, what a cry baby. Anyway. Now he says that there's a uh, next glitch claim, or exploit. He says that there is a working dupe glitch. Okay. These claims cannot be corroborated. The original dupe glitch involved trading items between players or group linked storage or buying things from the auction house and intentionally fucking with your internet connection at a precise moment where the game would both think that you had transferred the item and that you had not transferred the item, thus duplicating it. Um, AGS actually banned trading and even banned the use of your storage and banned all kinds of functionality within the game when these exploits were, were uncovered until a fix could be put into place, at which point a fix was put into place each time something like this happened, and, uh, um, you know, access to the auction house and to trading and all this stuff actually was uh, restored and players could play the game like normal again. But there were, and initially there were so many different ways to do this that uh, this happened a lot. And uh, the hope is now, after a year, that uh, everything that could have been done has been done, and everything that uh, has been exploited has been fixed. Um, so, so I want to take a brief aside and talk a little bit more about. The, the style of claims that I'm seeing this guy in this video make a lot. Um, 
sometimes it's impossible to prove a negative. Uh, for instance, you can say that God exists, and I can say there is no evidence that God exists. But if neither party can prove their argument, then it makes no difference. I can also claim that you are a camel fucker, and you can say, I don't fuck camels. But if neither party can prove their argument, the truth remains unknown, even if it is false. Uh, Christopher Hitchens um, had a great quote about claims like this, uh, in which no evidence is, is produced. Uh, the quote is, uh, that which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Good day, sir. <laughs> Moving on, he talks about some more exploits that possibly exist in the game. To this, again, I say, prove it. Um, you know, the guy is making a video right now, and he says that he knows about these glitches. If you already hate the game, and you don't want other people to play it, and you don't want to play it, then show me the exploit. Prove that it exists. Do it. Why would you not do it? Oh, that's right, because you, uh, you want to keep this secret for yourself, right? So, you know, maybe one day you do come back to New World so you can cheat again. What an asshole. Anyway, uh, claim number nine. <clears throat> Not having people to play with. Okay, so this is finally something that uh, I can agree with him on, amazingly. Um, this was the biggest problem in the entirety of the history of New World, in my opinion. And this is the, the biggest uh, contributor to the failure of the of the game initially um, at launch new world had one million concurrent players it had a launch that was just as big as uh what's that new korean top down everyone plays uh pay to win new world is not pay to win by the way which is great what the hell uh korean diablo-esque I'm terrible with, with my memory right now. Diablo-esque MMO. Lost Ark. Jeez. Okay. This, uh, you know, Lost Ark had the same amount of players initially as Lost Ark. Less than six months later, or about six months later, it had less than 50,000. Okay. So when the game first launched, there were not enough servers, and every single server was absolute max queue. Nobody could log on and play the game. <laughs> so what did AGS do? They doubled the amount of servers. So now finally, this one million player base uh, could could log in and play the game. Well, what happens uh, with this game and any other game is at, at initial launch, you have a huge uh, swarm of new players and everybody tries out the game. Um, doesn't matter how good the game is, you're gonna lose at least half of that amount of people. Like they're just, they're just gonna flake out. People wanna play whatever the new hype is and then they move on. The problem is, when all those people left, uh, a lot of those, we no longer needed this vast number of servers anymore. Um, several of the servers in the list uh, completely died out. They didn't have anybody on them. You'd have some servers that were still max Q. You couldn't get into them. And then other servers that didn't have anybody on them, <laughs> but like a handful of people who were having a terrible experience. Um, so. Something could have been done about this around about that time. Uh, you know, servers started to die off uh, because there were so many created, and AGS failed to consolidate those dying servers in a timely manner. They did eventually do this. They did eventually uh, take those servers that had so few people and combine them together, uh, which was great. Uh, that they the problem is that they were way too slow in doing this. Um, they also failed to enable server transfers. I think they gave up. Uh, they gave they gave away like one server transfer to everybody, um, and so everybody kind of shifted around a little bit, and that alleviated some pressure. Um, but then a lot of people made mistakes. You know, and they didn't think about where they were going. Um, they just used their used their one time transfer to go play with their friends on some other dead server, and then were and then they you know got close to the end game and they were standing around looking at each other like what the fuck net what do we do now well you can't do anything because ags didn't give them another server transfer they didn't even allow you to pay for one so all these players just quit the game <laughs> you know this they just quit the game They're like well i mean what's the point of playing a multiplayer game that isn't multiplayer 
Um, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind that this was the biggest mistake that they made, um, period. Um, anyway, uh, this, this issue, by, uh, by the way, was w probably the biggest issue that ultimately resulted in me quitting the game myself. Not because I was personally affected by it, I always watched the server po populations when transfers did become available. I always made sure that I waited and I waited and I watched the populations and I chose a server that was not dead. And so it didn't really happen to me, but it happened to a lot of players. And the game died as a result of this uh, terrible ma mismanagement. Uh, this is going to be important as well moving on. When, we, when the fresh start servers first come up, I'm sure that we're going to see a, a, a surge of players. And uh, then after a couple months go by, we're going to see that drop off. And uh, they're going to have to consolidate the new, the, the new fresh start servers as well. But only with, only with the new fresh start servers, if at any point in time they try to combine a fresh start server with a pre-existing server, I will quit the game immediately. I do not want to play on these old servers where all these exploits were still available. Um, that is the whole point of me even giving this game a second chance. So I don't think that they will do that. That would be incredibly stupid for them to do that. Uh, and so I'm acting on good faith come November 2nd when I start my new my brand new character with all new brand new characters uh, playing the game that it will stay that way until you know I quit for some other reason. Uh, moving on. Uh, number 10, point number 10, faction imbalance. Okay, this is true. Uh, this is also true about any MMO I have ever played with a faction choice all, dating all the way back to Dark Age of Camelot. There, <laughs> there will always be a Zerg faction. In World of Warcraft, uh, there were Horde-dominated servers and there were Alliance-dominated servers. Most people want to play on the winning team. Uh, some people enjoy being the underdog. There is no balancing this without disabling faction choice, which would disallow players to play with their friends. So you can't do that. Um, what you can do in New World, though, is you can change your faction. If, if you just you're like, dude, I didn't want to be the underdog. I want to go. I want to go play on the winning team. You can do that. That's fine. You know, go do it. It's it, it's not hard. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I go on further to make the point, and I think it's important to realize that this is not unlike real life. In, in real life, uh, babies that are born today in the United States of America uh, have a distinct advantage over babies that are born today in uh, war zones like the Ukraine. Uh, such is life. This is the way it is. Uh, the only solution is to just not have faction PvP, but I, I actually like that too, so I, le I mean, it is what it is. Point number 11, uh, slow content creation. This is true. Um, I believe in uh, the first year of this game, it was like the developers, uh, Amazon Game Studios, were trying to save a house that was literally on fire. <laughs> there were so many uh, exploits, glitches, and dupes and problems um, that I imagine it was difficult for them to focus on developing new content when there were so many fires to put out and uh, the game eventually went on life support and uh, it seems like lately now it's finally coming back to life a little bit um, that said a lot of things in that trial by fire period did get fixed and uh, to say that they did not develop any new content is a bold exa exaggeration they added a lot of things to the game since uh, day one uh, they have in-game item progression which did not exist at day one pvp arena uh, multiple dungeons, new dungeons were added. Uh, there's a new zone coming out, which is what everybody's hyped about. That's actually the size of three zones, so people say it's more like you're getting three zones. Um, and no doubt that zone will have dungeons in it. Um, they improved the storyline and storytelling. They they, they mo-capped and voice acted a bunch of stuff that was not mo-capped and voice acted before. They improved some, some uh, quests that were pretty boring um, when the name when the game initially came out uh, they added a bunch of new weapon types like the blunderbuss and 
my apologies, my recorder uh, cuts off after 10 minutes, and I don't want to bother trying to figure out how to fix that. So they, anyway, that I was saying they added uh, new weapons, uh, the Blunderbuss, the Void Blade, they're adding the two-handed sword, and um, I think that's it. Maybe there was something else I'm missing. But, you know, this is these are three completely new ways to play the game that did not exist when the game came out, uh, just off the top of my head. Um, they had seasonal content, obviously, for um, holidays. You know, uh, the, they had, like, a Christmas event and a Thanksgiving event and uh, Easter event and, you know, all that stuff. Um, and I haven't played the game now in a while, so I, I'm sure there's tons of stuff that, you know, I haven't been following, and I don't, I'm sure they've added lots of things that I... The second that I play again, I'm going to be like, what? But <laughs> anyway, we'll see. Uh, point number 12, he says, Fresh start servers are bad because old players won't grind again. Okay, so stay on your busted-ass server. I, I am going to invest my time into something that I know has not been broken yet. So if you want to stay on your old server, uh, you don't want to do the grind again, then you know, good luck and have fun. I'm not going to waste my time. Um, and, and neither are, I'm sure, plenty of the players that are going to come back for that, for the, the fresh starts. I think it's going to be a hit. Point number 13, Dungeon Finder doesn't work. Uh, so first of all, uh, there was no Dungeon Finder, so there's one thing I missed uh, when I <laughs> that I mentioned earlier uh, when I played. He says that the Dungeon Finder works, but then he also says that when people join the dungeon, they just leave immediately. My question here is, though, well, then why did they queue up for the dungeon if they're just going to leave anyway? Uh, it's confusing, and I feel like he's lying again. I feel like he, uh, that is probably not how it really is. Um, doesn't make sense that people would behave that way. So, I mean, it's not a stretch at this point, in my opinion, to say that this guy is full of shit. <clears throat> point number 14. I personally don't like this content, and I personally don't like that content, and I personally don't like this new content. Sounds pretty self-explanatory. This is a personal problem. <laughs> Moving on. Point number 15. YouTubers are shills again. All right. The first time I didn't really touch on this, but you do know that YouTube does require content creators to disclose any sponsorships in their videos and in their video description. So if they're shills, you're going to know about it, and you're going to have proof of that. I don't see no sponsorships from Amazon or AGS in any of Damone Kim's videos or any of the other uh, New World YouTube uh, creators that I watch. So I feel like this guy is uh, lying once again. And he I don't know what's wrong with this guy. He's kind of a psychopath. Anyway, number 16. Uh, Kibbles, who was a YouTube content creator for New World, got copyright striked by AGS. Yes, this did happen. What this guy does not mention in the video is the reason why. Uh, his YouTube videos, the ads on his the YouTube ads on his YouTube videos at the time, were targeting players with gold selling ads. Um, AGS ultimately reversed the decision when they realized that uh, it was not his fault that he didn't select those ads, and uh, they 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 dropped the copyright strike from him and they apologized to him and he made a whole video showing their apology to him. So it this all this happened. Uh, so what more do you want I would say like, why are we still talking about this a mistake was made a mistake was corrected good lord this guy just hates this game for some reason uh, number 17 claim number 17 AGS employees themselves browse gold selling sites to try and ban people AGS employees are maybe trying he says maybe <laughs> trying to sell their own gold to players that they can spawn with admin commands then he says, first he says maybe they're doing that. Then he says, quote, which has happened before and is happening now. So which is it? Did it, is it maybe happening? Or did it happen before and it's happening now? This guy contradicts himself. First of all, of course they could and should police gold selling sites. Because it's against terms of service to have to sell gold in the game for real money. They should be doing that. Second of all, what the fuck are you talking about? Do you really think an employee at AGS values whatever pennies they might make uh, trying to secretly create and sell gold to players more than their own actual job? Uh, they work at a game development studio for Amazon. Like, how much... Uh, 
do you really think that the New World Gold selling uh, uh, money that they could make is going to pay them more than their salary? Uh, I highly doubt that. Uh, any employee caught doing this would be canned immediately. Uh, he claims this has happened before. It has never happened before. There is no evidence of this ever happening, uh, even a single time. Uh, let's keep in mind that this guy that we're listening to in this video is a self-reporting cheater. He said he would use the exploit for himself, and he's not going to give it to anybody uh, earlier. And uh, as I previously mentioned, he is a serial liar. Uh, claim number 18. The server I am on has 700 players at prime time. Too bad. Too bad, so sad. Transfer to a more popular server. It's not hard. It's just that easy. Or if you're wise, you'll wait uh, until the fresh, server, fresh start servers come out, and you'll play on them because you know that they haven't been busted yet. You know that everybody will start on equal, equal footing. Um, but uh, honestly, I would not want this guy to come back to New World. It sounds to me like he is a self-admitted cheater himself. He seems to know quite a lot about all these exploits that he claims exists uh, that he w provides no evidence for and um, I just don't want that type of player really around my game anyway so please stay gone. Uh, play number 19 I can buy so much gold online oh really and how do you know about that cheater? You can't do that on fresh, servers, fresh start servers by the way because no one has farmed the gold yet. God this guy's a fucking idiot. Uh, play number 20 talking about more ways he he has heard about how he can cheat alright so I'm gonna end it here because the video ends as well this guy is really getting on my nerves <laughs> uh, by the way guys did you know that there's a way that you can hack your clients to, to summon a unicorn pegasus it'll fly in onto the battlefield come galloping you hop on it and it carries you into the sky and it gives you lightning bolts and then you can come you can carpet bomb the whole battleground and just kill players just bat left and right it's, a, it's actually one of the uh, best exploits in the game that almost nobody knows about. But um, I'm sorry, I can't really tell you how to do it uh, because then they would fix it. And I, I want to use it for myself. So uh, see you guys.